Hello everyone, this is the Food Workshop with Don Gianetti here at Udemy. We're going to take a look at some presentation images. This is Module 7 presentation and we're going to look at our second video showing how photographers uh, did a really great job in camera but made sure that they had their presentation ready at the end of, uh, of the day with Photoshop, Lightroom, and all the different tools that we have to use to make sure that it fit their view, their way of seeing. Presentation is a, uh, a big package for photographers. It's everything you do. It's your, uh, the paper you choose for your portfolio. It's your design for your website. It's how your images look on the web, on print, in a magazine, in a brochure, in a, in a uh, uh, personal leave behind. Your presentation is everything. We're visual people. Our visual presentation has to be top notch. So let's take a look at a few shots and where photographers did a very good job in camera, but decided to sweeten the pot a little bit by making sure the presentation was theirs. First up is Anders with a uh, interesting bacon shot. Uh, that smoke that you see there is uh, uh, real steam. What, uh, what Anders did is uh, just before he laid the bacon in, he poured a little bit of water in with the bacon grease and it just steamed like crazy. And then he, he hung, hung the, uh, the bacon in front of it. Nicely done. And then you can see the finished shot. We've added a little bit of a darkness around it. He's brought up the letters here in the, the old stove, really gave some detail to this old stove. This was an important part of what he wanted to do. He wanted that old stove to really read, and it does a very good job. Notice he also lightened the fire in here a little bit, darkened the bacon. You can see the bacon a little bit darker. Didn't do a whole lot of, of, of work with anything else. Made the pot a little bit shinier, adding contrast to the pot back here so that the handle stands out. Now notice, not very much Photoshop work at all, but watch the handle. Kind of hides, kind of stands right out. The handle itself doesn't change very much. Do you notice that? The handle itself doesn't really change. What changes the, the contrast of the luminance behind the handle. Uh, really, really nice shot by Anders up in Sweden. Let's look at his lighting. Softbox with a grid. Keep the light only where he wants it. He's got a white card over here to bounce this grid light back into the stove. That's the whole idea of this, uh, into the stove. Now behind this, you can't see, but behind this um, softbox is a is a snoot aimed at where the smoke is going to be, but it's flagged off so it doesn't get anything else. He's flagged off that snoot so it only gets the smoke. It doesn't hit the top of the pan. It doesn't hit the bottom of his hand or the, or the bacon going in. Let's go back and look at the shot. A little bit on the hand. I'm sorry. A little bit on the hand right here. But see, it's aimed at the smoke and the bacon. So we get that backlight feeling in here. Because if we shot that just with the softbox, it wouldn't be nearly as readable. Need to pass light through smoke. So really nice shot by Anders. Lily Dale went with some beautiful spoons and flowers. Look at the color. Really, really nice through here. We've got texture. We've got everything we need. It looks pretty good. Right out of the camera, it looks pretty good. This is a, a just a capture from the raw file. Lily wants a little more contrast and a little more pop. She really wanted to bring out that those greens uh, for her her design here. And notice the sharpness seems to be uh, enhanced as well because of the of the increased contrast. Let's go back and look. And she did a little cropping as well. Cropped out that little flower petal up here at the top. Didn't work with her composition, and she got this piece and it's just lovely we got all the detail in the uh, the powders and uh, uh, I believe those are raisins or whatever they are I'm not sure what they are but there are lava block lava I guess this is some sort of rock thing um, so pretty cool lighting 
Also, very simple, a softbox angled towards the back. Do you notice that the softbox isn't flipped towards the subject? She's feathering that softbox away from these things because when she turned the softbox flat onto them, it was too much light for the stuff. She got too much light on those little crystals, those little rocks, and it really kind of blew it up a little bit. So by turning the light and feathering it away from her set, she can much better control the way it falls, the way it reflects on the background here, and the way the light just starts to fall off but still lights up the objects because they're three-dimensional and they're sitting above that uh, surface so the light really picks it up you can see in here you can see how in the original shot how the light uh, just kind of swoops down here just a little bit it's not aimed at the product it's aimed slightly away from the product it's called feathering something that you should be familiar with it's really really a nice way to um, play with the light. You know, rarely, rarely, I think for me, do I do I just set up a light and and put it over the, to the left and shoot. Um, just life just isn't that easy. Uh, photography takes finesse. Um, if if it's so easy that anybody could do it, then it's so easy that anybody can do it. And I don't want to do something anybody can do. I don't want you to do something anybody can do. Because if anybody can do it anybody will and we won't have any reason for them to hire us well why should i hire you don anybody can do this i can hire somebody else or i can you know do a show of somebody else's work it's all the same julia laroe did a very classic julia is a, a wonderful food shooter up in the boston area and she did a very classic shot here i think um, almost painter like and now uh, she made sure that she did one of the things so perfectly and it's something you have to remember when shooting fruit that is you can't let the front of the fruit die if this fruit is cut and sits for five minutes all the little juice will dry up and it won't be as attractive the other thing is you've got to angle this so that we get highlights on the inside cut part of the orange we have to if we don't get highlights here it just doesn't look alive it looks kind of dead and boring so she really maintained that and this is straight out of the camera folks right straight out of the camera it looks pretty good julie popped up some color a little bit brought up the blues brought up the oranges which is a great um uh, color coordination thing here she brought those uh highlights up just a little bit more in here the rose looks great down in here and look at the beautiful styling on the rag sometimes when you use a, a dish rag or a napkin or a, um, a table a tablecloth or any of those things when you use them you may find that you'll spend more time messing with the tablecloth and the rag than you spend doing the food because that's hard to do those things when you lay them down just naturally think oh i'll just lay it here natural this will look really great great and then you get you know folds and wrinkles and things that shouldn't be there she's very carefully made sure that there's no sharp folds everything's nice and rounded through here so everything looks pretty good when you get those sharp creases it can be a real pain in the butt and then you find yourself uh you find yourself pulling out uh you know ironing boards uh uh wadding up paper and and sticking the paper in there and folding it over the paper and then taping it down and it can be a real nightmare but uh, making that cloth look natural and and smooth is a bit of an art julie is a natural light shooter so she's got her a little her table right up next to the windowsill here of her studio and uh, white card on this side you can see it in the oranges there we're going to go back in a second white card there window light coming in and very careful placement of those orange slices so they pick up that window that window goes all the way to about over here it's a pretty good size window so she's got some room to play with let's go back and look at how that plays out see the broken slate that's what she's shooting on a piece of broken slate you can see it's got some edges and things to it and you can see what the white cards doing to these two oranges right there and the, the the little bowl 
right there and the, the rag. It's just pulling that light back in, not letting these, these areas go too darn dark uh, because it wouldn't fit with the presentation that she wanted to do of this particular shot. So um, sometimes you have to Sometimes you have to shoot it a couple of different ways before that presentation starts to, to you know, form foment in your brain. Uh, but it certainly can be uh, done, and certainly can be done well. Salami by Rose Smith. Now, salami is hard to shoot because when you photograph meats like this, they tend to go dark and boring. They just do. Uh, Rose wanted a feeling of light coming from the back, and I'll show you how she did that in just a moment. Feeling of light coming through the back and coming through this one little slice of salami up here. She then took it into Photoshop and very carefully took the color cast out. You see the little blue color cast in it now? You probably see it now when I went back to it. A little bit of a blue color cast. She pulled that up. And then she pulled up the meat individually here. She pulled up the salami to make the salami look more fresh, more inviting, got a little more light coming through that guy right there and let these, these bright areas just kind of blow out, out of focus, just kind of blow out and blend and blur. So it's really, really nice, clean shot by Rose. And let's see how she did it. Softbox, partial scrim. So the softbox is not hitting the, the subject. The softbox is moved off to the side. And then in front of the softbox is a partial scrim. So that's cutting this light. The scrims are always going to cut the light by a stop or a stop and a half. So it's cutting the light a little bit, but it's also letting this light wrap around. We talked in earlier videos about dark field lighting. Well, this is kind of a variation of it. The bright light is over here but light doesn't just come straight like like a you know like a knife this way it wraps around this scrim and comes in from this side and fills it in where the scrim comes right across the board the scrim light is what she's shooting into right back here is behind the scrim while the softbox provides light all the way around let's go back up and look at the shot See how the light's coming all the way around? That light from the softbox is doing this, and the scrim is knocked back a little bit, so she's kept the textures and all of this on this side. Very, very simple, but very complex at the same time. You really got to know what you're doing. She's got white cards here. These are little V cards that she's got taped. Little V cards pulling light back in, letting, letting um, the salami have something bright to... To reflect, I mean, salami is a little bit shiny, so it will reflect if you give it something to reflect. So, really beautifully done. Tammy Bogastron. These are, I think, gift, some sort of gift egg that she wanted to, to do. And uh, look at the light. Isn't the light delightful? We've got, oops, sorry, I didn't want to do that. We've got some light coming from the back here on these eggs here. We've got it right here. I love this little rim light coming down. Uh, all kinds of fun things happening here. We got the little marbles in there. Um, beautiful work with the cloth. Ta Tammy told us that it took her quite a bit of time to work with that cloth. Um, it's just a lovely shot. It looks great straight out of camera, but it looks even better when Tammy works her magic on it. She got rid of some of those marbles. She didn't want to see them after she decided afterwards. She brought up the highlights here on this part of the egg, which we don't even really see here. We see them that they're there, but we don't really see them. We saw those highlights instead. So she brought up those front highlights, which gives the egg much more roundness, you know, really gives us that sense of dimension with the eggs. She popped the color just by exposure and contrast, real simple stuff, but she popped the color and it really looks great. This little bit of a muddy gray background isn't white, not nearly as white as that is. And she's just brought it up just a little bit. Uh, you got to be controlled and careful with what you're doing. You don't want the shots to look like they were photoshopped. Um, thank goodness HDR hasn't made it over to um, food photography yet. Let's, let's all hope that it doesn't. Um, it's it would be really hard now you can see just how small those eggs are they're tiny they're tiny little eggs um, and she's got her 
her set here. She's got a big big softbox back there. You can barely see it through the, the material. She's got her diffusion hanging in front and she's got a white board here, a silver board there, a white board here, and a black uh, board on this side. And the black board on that side is really for that right there. That's really all it's doing. But without that, this egg can start getting really bright up here and start reflecting something else. So she's got the blackboard to really control that one egg. That's back here. Angle of incidence, angle of reflection. The silver board is lighting up nicely from the angle that she's got it set at. Silver board uh, nicely. And look, it's giving a beautiful soft highlight here. It's a board, so it's going to have a bright spot in the middle and then kind of fade off. And that's what we're seeing here. We're not seeing a hard line or the whole board, you know, perfectly reflected. We're just seeing a little bit of it here. And on this side, see how nice it just opened up the shadows. We don't have much of anything on this side. Um, this is the big, big board here. And then this white, this white board here is the, is the fill card. So it's very nicely done. Um, shot by Tammy Bogostron. So let's go look at what we've got. We've got Tammy's colorful eggs. We've got Rose's wonderful salami. Julie's painterly oranges. Lily Dale's crisp and bright um, little little rocks, and Anders cooking bacon. All right, this was a video two, module seven presentation. I hope you learned something. Do something before you go to the next uh, video, please. Do a shot, create something new and unique for you and think about your presentation and really, really explore how you can make that presentation have more of you in it, more of your vision. All right, see you on the next video.